like I'm the number one gift giver on the planet. There's no, there's no one better. Like there's no one, there's no one who's going to make someone feel better than I'm going to make them feel. That's, that's just a fact. And like that for me, that get, I feel like I then get into situations like where I'm like too deep, too quick, but because I've made someone feel a certain type of, of way that I didn't, I didn't need to do, I didn't need to do that. You know, I, like I didn't need to do that. I could have just like been normal, but instead <laughs> I, I wasn't. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. You're listening to The Cool Table. My name is Adriel Smiley, and today we are in the cut with Mavi. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us. Um, it's, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you with us. Now, I said this before, after listening to the, to the mixtape a couple of times, I really, really wanted to know how you came up with the name, The Flores. We'll talk about the themes behind the mixtape, which is like, we could go for hours on that, but the actual name, The Florist, how did that name come? Yeah, I mean, um, originally, you know, I was gonna um, name it after one of the songs, um, uh, but I wanted to, to name the mixtape after the the inspiration. And, and I'd actually written um, the, the story of The Florist before, b- before and that's what, um, that, it was actually the, the story that inspired the music. Um, and then obviously I, I, I was able to actually do the short film um, after the music was done, but the actual story, the, the written story was done before. And so, um, yeah, there's, and it makes it, it will make a lot of sense in a year or so when I release a, a feature film that's gonna come with my, um, my debut album which i guess is like a major spoiler alert um but Thank there's so some much. there's some easter eggs <laughs> there are some easter eggs in in the um in the short film series that kind of all make that make a lot of things make sense um when when you see the the the, the feature film which is coming um next year in uh your story that you did with daniel farine you talked about like your writing process of sometimes writing like poems just basically it's journaling and then music coming afterwards talk about that like I I would love to know what that process is like because I'm a, I'm a big journaler myself and sometimes it doesn't always turn into anything but it seems like you've kind of tapped into journaling at the highest level so talk about what those kind of journals turn into yeah I'm you know I I you know just I'm, I'm sure like yourself and um uh I'm I like the work, you know, like I'm, you know, I really like the reps and the work. So I, I try to write every, every day and try to, um, try to write a song every day. And essentially, like I look at the, the song as like, it's a, it's a story. So it has like a beginning, middle, end, um, or sometimes a beginning, middle, middle. Uh, and um, when I can write something in just like real words, or I can write a poem, or I can write like a very kind of short form story, um, that's that's the easiest part to do write it in like normal normal human words just like um and then then after the the, the toughest part about um writing a song for me is um is the melody is to try and there's so many melodies out there there's so many songs out there and um so it to be able to get like um a melody that's unique is i actually think it's like one of the hardest things and so once once you once you have the melody then you go back to the story and then it's like um kind of carving time you can then um right i've said this sentence in normal um talk now i've got to make this into um fit the melody so these words need to change here this needs to do this blah 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 so it's kind of like it's deconstructing it putting everything in place and then and then re-putting it back together um 
uh, but it's easy to do that when you have the blocks. It's very easy to do that when you have um, the, the the story in normal words, um, the melody, which is which is difficult, and then um, you know crafting it into something. And that's the that that's the artistry. That's 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 the um, the final piece. It's it's really good to hear that because that's my favorite kind of music. Is like music that has that story that. Like you feel like you went somewhere when you listen to that song. Like a song I listen to a lot is um, Saint Vincent, the Melting of the Sun, and it's yeah. like I, I just wish I could have see whatever see whatever story came to her mind that made that because that song feels like a score to me, which is how I, I guess I would describe music as like your music is more a score of something. And I guess when we when we see the movie, we'll see what um, the score yeah. is for. But your your music is more like a score than just quote unquote music. What do you yeah. listen to that you feel like is in that same vein? Because there is like a, a in between, like you know, just music that everyone's just like they're just rapping, just singing, right? Like the lyrics, but yours feels like a story. What do you listen to that you feel like is on the long the same lines of that? Um, honestly, I think you know, this is I was telling Daniel this. Um, I since I started the Moby Project, I've I've actually stopped listening to to music. And it's like oh, wow. one of the sad, it's one of the saddest things actually ever. But it's like I'm committed to doing that because um, I'm so desperate for for Moby to be. Um, I'm so desperate for Moby to be um, like Moby for it to be like so specifically me. So um, uh, one moment, I'm really sorry. This I have to open this thing. I apologize. So I, I'm so desperate for Moby to actually be um, like unique, and I've got like a addictive personality. So like I will listen to my favorite artists, and th there's no way that I won't let their work creep into into my work. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of really dedicated myself to being like, okay, I, I need to, in order for me to do this properly, um, I need to, to to remove myself from being influenced. Um, by anything else and actually just truly get to the point where I can actually just create what I want to create. Some of the genres are going to be, um, you know, pre, pre me um, doing music, I was a really, I am a really big fan of Michael Jackson, a big fan of Prince, a big fan of Andre 3000, um, Childish Gambino, Lauren Hill. Um, these are some of the people that like I've really listened to and, and some others um, as well. And so I still have um, the love for their music. Um, I just I just don't um, actively listen to um, to music much because I'm, I'm very, very much in the in the creating phase of it right now. So. OK, OK, I like that. I like that. I could I think it's worth it. Like the direction that this mixtape is in, in terms of being intentional, oh, we're moving again. No, no, we're, we're fine. Um, so I'm really, really sorry. It was just, <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, no, we're, we're genuinely like, it's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's, let's continue. This is, no, this is very, this no. is bad. This is bad, bad, but good, bad, but good. Bad, but good. Uh, no worries, man. No worries. We're, ha we're happy to have you. Um, you had this line, and, I, and maybe you can tell me the song is on because I forget which song it's from. But you said, you were mine until I made your dreams come true. Yeah. Well, that, that, that one hit me. Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm really glad you actually said that. Like, I feel I, the, with, with Nine, it's a song that, um, it's, actually, it's actually a really sad song. It just kind of seems happy. Um, and um, I think that idea of, um, you know, you you meet somebody and you, you want everything and they you 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 get to know what they want you then give them what they want and then th the second that they get it um maybe they don't want you anymore you know and uh that's uh yeah that's a pretty heartbreaking um i guess turn of events when something like that happens 100 percent. that like that line really really hit me and i was like I, I haven't heard anyone say it like that. I got to give you your credit for that. Like, the, no one, no one has said it like that. Because that feeling is unique, you know. Of like, 
Yeah. All right, it's, it's going to work out. I rock with you. You rock with me. Okay. And then it's like, okay, I've I've made you happy. I've given you what you what you're looking for, and all of a sudden it's not working. So yeah. that's like a, it's like then, it's like I a mean, unique type like, of pain. Yeah, and do you know what? Like it's just just to open up. Like it's um, it's I've been through it in a different way. So I was in a, I was in a relationship before, and um, uh, we, you know, we worked together on a lot of things, and then um the second certain things started to work for me it it just it just so happened that it became really obvious that um it the it, it made it more obvious that the relationship wasn't going to work um Ooh. the more the, the more my dreams came true you know and made it it made it uh but before 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 your dreams come true um your your mind's in a different place so you're 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 going to accept more um you're more desperate you're more um willing to to do whatever because you're you're, you're trying so desperately to get somewhere so you you're really not in it's actually really a bad time <laughs> in your life <laughs> to, to get into anything um so so yeah but um you can whenever i think whenever as a as a person whenever you can whenever you get that clarity on 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 what's good for you um yeah you, you gotta kind of move accordingly I, I like that you said clarity i hope anyone who's listening to this later on kind of catches that gem because that's really what you need there's times when you you think you like someone or you're really or you know you have someone has something good but you know you don't know, have that clarity your mind's kind of muddy just from the infatuation or whatever it is so i like that you said clarity i feel like that's a huge yeah. one you had a you had another gem and this might be like i'm probably going to be stealing this line in perpetuity 100 <laughs> percent um you said love is unpredictable and that's something i wish that i had said that way because there's a, there's a lot of times when i talk to people about getting into relationships or finding someone and sometimes they say oh i like them they like me and i'm like it isn't always that simple what came to your mind you said love is unpredictable because i think that even fits for not just romantic relationships but just love in general yeah no like um so yeah like, i mean as you know you know through my music what i'm the, the 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 only theme is is love and trying to dissect the the different facets of love um and so in doing that it's like i've just like i'm a fairy tale um person so like i want like you know like romance and blah 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 and whatever and like happy endings and you meet somebody and you give everything to them and da 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 but um the the reality is it's that it's that love is like probably the most unpredictable thing you you have no you have no idea how um one small thing one big thing 20 big things 57 small things are going to change how love looks like to you or um, you could you could think that everything's completely perfect and the other person's in complete agony because something wasn't someone didn't apologize for something four years ago like well you know whatever like so so it it has and and then some things are out of your control and I think that's the thing that makes it unpredictable um, it is it is completely it's out of your control if um, I mean there's a lot of stuff that's out of your control now I don't want to I don't want to say anything too controversial right now so I'm not, um like there's pe people are people so um maybe they're genuinely like you wake up and you don't love somebody anymore like and you know the other person feels like the worst person in the, you know they're like what happened you know like they're and people's timelines are completely different as well so I think that realizing that love isn't going to be everything that you want if you are with somebody and let's say you both love each other, there's there's two love stories at play there. It's not actually one, it's not one love story. Um, and that I think that, that took me a while to to get as well. You know, probably still learning that like genuinely, like it you are still your own person. So therefore it's actually there's two love stories at play and they're they're both evolving on different trajectories based on what's happening in your life. Even if you you were doing the same thing every single day and you were the same person you're you're woven together you are like literally two different people so therefore your experiences are going to be different 
So therefore, there's two love stories. I like I like the idea of there being two love stories because I feel like if people thought of that, they would go into their you know expectations of love differently, you know. But I yeah. think that we, as a people, we always think of oh love, so we're blending this. It's it's uh, totally. it's one person, and the, and the thing that kind of made me think of love being unpredictable is thinking about my parents. Now, my my dad, his password for everything is my my youngest brother's name. And my him and my youngest brother sometimes might have beef or issues. And it's like, that's kind of what love is. It's like, I could love you to death, but you might not feel it. And so Tuesday through right. Thursday, you're like, ah, oh, he don't love me. It's whatever. But he might love you eight days of the week. And that's like, you know, there's, there's two sides there. So I, I like that's like the difference between feeling loved and then giving love. Yeah totally yeah and also as well it's like the this is stu- this is stuff that i actually admittedly suck at like you know i i am i think i'm really good like at writing about it or really good with explaining it but like in my own life i am like quite ter- terrible with that uh, yeah just how the reality like what i just mentioned to you like I'm only really starting to starting to see that in reality in my own life, you know, but, mm-hmm. but, you know, someone who is obsessed with that kind of fairy tale, like mindset, or whatever, they automatically think that it's our love story. It's one, you know, you know, like this person's going to be like this forever or nothing's going to go wrong, whatever it is. So, um, but, you know, um, it's cathartic in a lot of ways to, um, um, listen back to the music that I've made and um, even watching back some of the interviews and being like, okay, you know what, like, there are some sense being spoken uh, <laughs> like some <laughs> of the time and, and, you know, you're wanting people to take this advice and maybe you should take the advice yourself. Sometimes. I, I, I feel that. Before, before we move on, I want to do, do like a romance check on you. Like, what's your, what's your romance game like? Like, what do you have in your bag? Like, are you are you a gift giver? Are you a random acts person? Like like me over the past year, like I turned into a baker. You know what I'm saying? Like I would either bake, I would bake cake, I'd bake cakes for my ex, or get her, you know, cakes if there was something big happened to her. Like I'd be like, get a cake and then put the milestone on the cake. That was like you know was something I started doing. So what what's in your romance bag that you know you've added? Um, okay, I'm not look okay. okay. I feel like is this is this is this the right platform to like fully flex? Like, I mean, what are we? For what sure, are we doing? Like, for sure. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is what gets, and this is what like I feel like maybe gets me in trouble. I'm like probably the most romantic human being on the planet. Like, <laughs> not, I, I don't care. Who, I don't, I don't, listen, whoever's listening to this, like, I'm the number one gift giver on the planet. There's not. There's no one better. Like, there's no one. There's no one who's gonna make someone feel better than I'm gonna make them feel. That's that's just a fact. And like that for me, that get, I feel like I then get into situations like where I'm like too deep, too quick, but because I've made someone feel a certain type of, of way that I didn't, I didn't need to do, I didn't need to do that. You know, I, like I didn't need to do that. I could have just like been normal, but instead <laughs> I, I wasn't. So, so that's basically, yeah. So, I mean, I just, but I, I think the the idea of being romantic is, you know, it's really, really cool and just really trying to think of things that like, um, that, you know, nobody's um, done or like, you know, at least that person hasn't received. Just because I really feel like if you like somebody, um, you should really try to give them like your all. And I'm mm-hmm. a creative person just in general, like everything I do is, is creative. Like, um, so, it, that, it doesn't end with, um, you know, when it comes to like romance, I try and think of like, you know, creative things to, to do, creative gifts um, to get. Um, yeah, and especially like, if you're not a bajillionaire, like you mm-hmm. have to be like, you have to be, but you wanna like, you wanna give a gift that like, it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or not. Like it, it was it's pretty much the same because it's so of far, the yeah. level of, yeah, because the level of, of thought it's like, if I was a billionaire, I couldn't buy a gift like this. So that I, I really try to think of like, what can I make or what can I do? Or what can I, what experience can I give that is like a priceless, essentially. So the I guess the short answer is the bag is <laughs> gifts. extremely, the, the, the bag is extremely deep. 
<laughs> I, bro, I, I honestly feel like you're my spirit animal because you saying like you be giving gifts and making it too deep too early. That like I I that's like my like Achilles heel. Like I'll 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 be like you know what they would really love this, but I don't want to make it that deep. And then two weeks <laughs> later, it's like how come we're not rocking no more? And I'm like. Oh. I, sh- I should I should have bought him the whole street like I planned to, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I applaud you for actually going through with it because I'll I'll sit there and be like, I'll get it. I want to get her a huge teddy bear. That's too serious. I'll get her a, a small teddy bear, like you know. And it's like I be I be coming back at it, but no, I I appreciate you for going in because we need people like you to still do that, like to carry to carry the torch because some of us are a little too cautious in that space. So we need people like you to carry that torch. Okay, I mean, I'm yeah, gladly. Um, on a rational, you said I'm done trying to prove it. What What were you saying? And done trying to prove when you said I'm done trying to prove it. Um, I'm done trying to prove it. Like I think, uh, just you know, um, I'm actually like at the house of one of my best friends, and we we both have this chat about being people pleasers. Because like we're like, you know, the most people pleasing people <laughs> um, you'll meet, and I feel like um, it. There has to come a point where you you you, you just like okay. I look at this last year, um, and I'm, I'm not even trying to do any kind of flexing or anything like that. But like, it's a pandemic. Like I signed to one of the biggest independent labels in North America. Like I, um, I, I toured um, internationally, um, toured in Canada, um, like directed and starred in a short film, released a mixtape, like all, all this year, all in the second half of this year. And yet I feel like I have to, to prove to someone who did 0% of what I just said, um, you know, and or, or people who will, they will never do never yeah one 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 percent of what i said so like um it's just that mindset like like and it's 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 like um there's a lot of people who are supporting me which th- those are the people that i should be thinking about um yeah you know i, I was i would have spent or have been spending a lot of my time thinking about people who first of all don't care anyway and and, and second of all are not doing anything so i'm i'm like in that I just thought like I'm really done trying to um to prove my worth to um people who aren't worth it and then also um not that they're not worth um it they're they're just not worth me trying to prove my worth that's what I meant by that just to, to clear that up but um yeah and you know um it it's been it's a long and I'm I'm currently even still um going through uh just you know thoughts like that of you know wanting to make the best decisions for 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 myself um rather than considering everybody else's decision like my my goal and is to distribute love through through my music and um I, I fail at that goal when I'm um I'm not putting my art first, you know, because and I'm considering everybody else and or um, then I'm not executing what I'm actually supposed to be doing. And therefore, I'm failing at the, the only job that I actually want to do and now have the opportunity to do so. Yeah, it's just kind of like just, you know, really wanting to um, just not not prove, just, you know, not wanting to prove anything to anybody. Yeah, I feel like that's huge. Like, that's something that I feel like everyone deals with. So that's why I really like that you put it um, on the project. The person who I've been thinking about a lot when it comes to proving themselves, oddly, is Pete Davidson. And I I think, obviously, he's been in the news, this whole Kim (laughs) K thing. But I'm like, this guy don't care to prove nothing to nobody. Like, I'm like, the internet was bashing him, whatever, before. Internet bashing him now. I'm like... I, it it kind of hit me as like a moment. I was like, why would he not do something so the internet wouldn't bash him if they were bashing him in the first place? And yeah. I'm like, that make I'm like, I I totally get it now. Like there, if if the internet's hit, killing him already, there's no reason for him not to try and rock with Kim K. That's what he thinks and makes him happy. So 
I, I yeah. totally feel that and about like not trying to, you know, prove yourself to yeah, everybody. They're gonna because I think the the thing that Achilles heel with people pleasers is that like they don't you are not going to win them all. And I think that the the goal is to try and win them all. And I it, it's 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 crazy and it's very irrational actually to to try and people please because you know that you can't win them all yet you are trying to win them all still yeah um, and there is nothing there's nothing pete davidson can do he's going to get hated on regardless so at least let him live his life like, <laughs> like you know what i mean like so no that, no that's a good point it's like yeah you're not you're not gonna win that battle so there's absolutely uh, no point in, in even trying to please those people um in in the two rush video yeah. everyone there's first of all first of all it's hooping shout out shout out to the hooping days but <laughs> shout out to the hooping days yeah. but the thing that i noticed was there's like a rock paper scissors theme what's the deal with that like everyone's doing rock paper scissors before they do something what was the whole idea behind that um it was a, a handshake that i that i actually had in real life with um my friend who was sadly killed um and so i wanted to kind of like i mean that's like you, you know you really got to know me to know that like you know that's no, nobody would know that it's just like a it's, a it's a particular handshake that i had with um with with my friend who died and um so i brought that back uh and he was also a basketball player so it's really like a kind of a in, in a way uh, and the whole character is, is a nod to him, you know, in a, and there's some changes that have been made just to kind of adapt to the story. But that, that whole character that is, um, is really about, about him and his life. That's really nice. I like that. I like that. Um, be before we get to our, our cool table questions that we ask everybody on the show, I really want to know what was, what was the start of the mixtape? Like, what was what was the first song that kind of led you in this direction? Either the first idea you had or the first song that was actually finished. Um. So yeah, I mean, nine was the last song. Um, okay. That, that that was done. The first song that was done was actually Helium, um, mm. and low key, low key, I love. Um, I did double singles. All the B sides are actually my favorite songs by far. Um, mm. And yes, it sucks the way the way people stream these days, like, you know, the B-sides are getting like absolutely zero love. And like, I really feel that like there's so many gems on the, um, on the, on the B-sides of, of each of the, the releases. Um, uh, yeah, like pretty much every single one is just like, you know, um, my favorite, but um, it, yeah, I, I, when I was putting it, Helium came first, um, but before even any of the songs, the story came first. I had written the story um, as the first thing. And I knew it was going to be called The Florist. Um, and I knew it was, um, you know, pretty much what I, want, what I wanted to do with the songs. I just, I wasn't there yet. Um, and so it was, a, it was some time after um, that I got a chance to actually sit and, and write the songs and record them. And I, and I was able to do that at the end of um, 2020 um, in the UK uh, with, with a couple of my en engineers that I work with. Um, we're able to put the project together um it wasn't supposed it wasn't a mixtape it was i recorded 16 songs and i cut them down to to um to 10 that, that's basically um you know it, they it, they all they they made sense and so those those why those 10 were, were, were chosen they're eclectic there's different genres but the themes are very you know um coherent um going through um i wanted to deliver something purposefully eclectic so like, uh, it's not like I don't know who I am or I'm like, you know, I'm confused and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm, Moby is eclectic. Moby is pop, R&B, you know, hip hop, you know, um, indie alternative, cinematic. Like I, I am all of those things um, on purpose. And um, yeah, and so that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's kind of what it was. Yeah, that, that's my favorite thing about the project is I feel like sometimes I'm getting three songs in one song and mm -hmm. it's like you know just seeing that mix in this like on the same album or the same mixtape is for sure still cool but getting that on the same song is like a different type of 
type of ride. So that's one of my favorite things um, about the yeah. project. This, I'm excited to hear your answer for this one because um, I, I don't. I feel like you're not an exotic animal person. So I'm excited to hear where your answer is for this one. When people <laughs> get a hundred million dollars, they buy exotic animals. I don't know if it's the rules, it's just what happens. Michael Jackson with his monkey, Justin Bieber with his monkey, Mike Tyson with his tiger. So when you mm -hmm. get $100 million, what animal are you going to spend it on? Um, honestly, you know, the, the tiger is my favorite animal. But like, you know, maybe I'll get a, a little baby cub just mm. as well. But I would get an elephant. Um, that would be my that would be my big purchase. I'd get like a, a baby elephant, you know, grow up with it, you know, Vibes. You know, realistically, this is very practical. It's a very practical exotic animal to get as well. Okay. Yeah, it, it's enormous. But if you're if you've got hundred million dollars, then you've got space. So that's easy. You don't have to spend the ridiculous money on on meat to feed like a tiger or a crocodile. You just you just get a couple trees, you know, and some some berries if you know if, if it's if it if it you know feels a little Mm -hmm. sugar deficient or whatever water you're good to go like it's it's very easy to maintain an elephant like you know um so that's and and then yeah and then you can tell it all your secrets and it'll never forget so there you go I, I i like that i can actually picture you with an elephant you just like petting its trunk the baby elephant like i, I can physically picture it and then as well what you what you said about telling it your secrets like you know, a dog's a man's best friend. It's not like he will talk to their dog. You talking to your elephant is like its own form of therapy within itself. So I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, and and also, an elephant isn't isn't gonna be all like barking and like doing like you know oh, it's a very fast. stoic, very stoic creature. You know, so you are gonna get you can you can really meditate with your elephant. You know, it's like that's crazy. There's just, yeah, I feel like there's I feel there's a lot of practicality to a, a very impractically sized animal i'd never thought i would hear practicality and elephant as a pet like together but you know you, you've actually sold me because i'm thinking like you're right it's it's a calm animal like you know what i'm saying you could talk you could talk to it and feel safe like you're not yeah. spending all types of money on me like yeah no, but also at the, same, at the same time it has no predators like it's it's like there's no one's coming for you for your elephant. Ah. like you know you don't have to like worry about it and also realistically your elephant isn't going to turn around and eat you one day like that's what i'm thank you like i'm not trying i'm not trying i'm not trying to get a tiger or an eagle who's going to one day eat me if i look at it wrong like <laughs> that's that's my issue like I, that's why I love these animals. I'm like, they're animals at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? The same way that humans turn on you, you got to understand animals yeah. do the same. Yeah. No, that's 100% that. I don't care if you've known it for 10 years and you think you're cool. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> not nah. not, not going to cut it. Uh, no. they, they say that the top five people in your life define who you are. Now, your top five could be two people. Or it can be 10 people. But who are the people in your life who help define who you are? Um, it, this sounds really like um, that. I thought I knew that list, mm. like really, really clearly. Um, but, you know, I, I really feel like I'm coming into a place in my life where um, like people are treating me differently um for for actually no reason because nothing is actually like nothing's really happened it's not like i'm a billionaire or anything like crazy is happening but people are um i feel like showing themselves in in different ways and, and so you know one of the people who two of the people aren't alive anymore but who have made like a really really big impact my uncle who i was named after and then my um Jonathan who who was killed um my friend um the the person's house that I'm at right now in, in Germany um like I, I would say I would say she's my only like com complete 
friend who's a female from like beginning of, of knowing her to now like you know how yeah. you, you can meet a female but realistically like one of one of you likes each other or like you feel some type of way or there's there's something that makes the relationship weird um and I, i've never met someone who's just been like you're my family from the from literally from from day one and felt super comfortable um and uh yeah someone who in, in a lot of ways is is like me but in an, also in a lot of ways um you know like is, is really just there to like kind of uh yeah just kind of support me like you know uh, in, there's there's like um there's people who like really ride for you and um you feel like you know it doesn't matter what you do they're going to ride for you um and um you know at the same time if you're if you're not if if, if you're not being the best they won't they'll, they'll still they'll be able to tell you mm-hmm. that and then you can then you'll take it because you've got respect for them so i'd say her her name's nessie and um and then um my mom um yeah and i think with my family in general it's been like a um crazy relationship but um you know i'm i'm kind because of my mom you know i'm generous because of my mom you know i'm a, i'm the people pleaser because of my mom you know i'm hard working because of my mom so um you know a, a lot of the good traits that i have um like tenacious all all these things um it is 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 because of my mom um and i'm like the right the right amount of gambler you know like i um i wouldn't i i'm not afraid to to gamble big for for something that's important you know and i think so many people i think that's a difference with some with with success so people who are going to be really successful is that their ability to know when to gamble um uh, and and yeah moments where it's like it's important to you know put everything out on the line and or you know and not being scared to do that and you know that's just like my mum you know my mum and dad came to, to england with nothing and that's that's a big gamble with three kids um and then somehow put us all through private school and da 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 and whatever but everything's and even putting us through private school they don't have like huge pensions but um they just really believed in investing in their kids that's 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 another gamble you know because some maybe some people wouldn't have done that and maybe put their kids through normal school so that they would have more money down the line um but they they gambled big and then they they won big because we're, we're all really good people and you know none of us are going to allow, allow our parents to um um to suffer or to um not be taken care of so that was a you know a, a good gamble so for me like i've always been someone who's like willing to um to to make the necessary gamble so i'd say my my mom but like i'm including my dad but specifically my mom um and then uh yeah um yeah that's that, that that's pretty much it. i'm i'm sure i'm missing some people who i really really love um but you know i was already this person so you know i feel like they they haven't shaped they haven't shaped me into this person um um so i just got to it's very i rock with that so heavy yeah this guy said i was already this person talk it yeah. king talk it <laughs> this guy said i was already this person like it was yeah, moms who helped moms did moms helped me out when you met me i was already that guy so yeah that's very true yeah I like yeah. I, I like I like that one a lot. I love I love to hear uh, people's top five because I feel like that really tells you a lot about a person. You know, like who a person really, really is. Obviously, there's the art, there's the business, and there's what you see. But you know, the people around you and how they treat you and how you feel about them is really, really what matters. So I, I love I love hearing the top five. And, and of course, listen, I, I'm. I'm I'm team moms all day. So if I if I don't hear someone's mom in their top five, I'm gonna ask them about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, a, like there's a reason for that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I I like there's a tiny bit of beef. That's why I didn't mm. say her first. But like, I mean, it, it's you can't. There's you can't. I mean, there's you can't. I mean, I, there's no 
there's no uh I, I don't i'm not existing without without her influence in my life so it's uh it's yeah no, it's 100 percent. this is the last one you've dropped already so many gems in this interview so i'm excited to see what you have to say next but we do a segment on the radio show called wednesday wisdom a new motivational quote or saying every week either something you tell yourself or something you share with the people around you when they're feeling down so what is that for you that motivational quote that you either remind yourself of or share with the people around you i'm gonna i'm gonna say three um but the official one is i will not be denied um it's something that i've like told myself since i was like 16 so from when i was like you know, I, I come from England, just like one of the worst basketball countries in the world. Um, very, very talented um, players there. It just, uh, for some reason, it's just not one of the elite countries. And, um, but I told myself, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make money playing basketball. Um, so whatever I've got to do, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, just every practice, I would just tell myself, like, you know, I won't be denied. Like every tryout, every um, game. Um, and then that kind of carried on to like, when I... Um, you know, I, I was able to play basketball um, for money. I was able to actually, like, you know, I got myself my first deal. I didn't have an agent. I flew myself to, like, four countries, tried out for teams, did all the interviews myself and, and got myself um, a deal. I got myself a second deal. Um, so, like, I was able to kind of, like, make things happen purely because I wasn't going to be denied. Um, and when I stopped playing basketball and I started music, um, it actually took me... It was like the first year and a half after I quit basketball. I wasn't, I wasn't doing music. I was just writing. Um, and but the second I, I was like, okay, I don't know how to sing, rap, do or do anything, but I'm going to learn all those things, and I'm going to get to at least the standard I was as a as an athlete in in music. And and I just, I simply won't be denied. Like I, I nothing is going to stop me from from doing that. So just kind of like. Um, um, you know, like I have almost 4,000 songs written now because like I, I'm desperate to become like one of the be best songwriters like that there, there's been like, you know, like you can do that with repetitions and um, and practice. And um, so that that's such a big goal, but I won't be denied. Like I will I will go down as one of the most successful songwriters because I'm going to work. I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. You know, I will play stadiums. I will. Um, like have uh, a um, critically acclaimed debut album because I'm I, I just won't be denied. So I would say for, for anybody, um, it's it's and even when you say those words out loud, it's such a confidence. It's an it's it's, a, it's, a, it's an injection of confidence to yourself when you say the words like you know I won't be denied. Like because you're what you're saying is no matter what happens, like I am I will not be stopped. Um, and so. Yeah, so that, that that's that one. Um, this the second one is um, it. It sounds very like um, aggressive, but it's not meant to be. And it's like uh, bullies aren't bully bullies aren't bulletproof. Um, and, and what that what I mean by that is like I was bullied all through school, um, and um, it, it took me a while to realize like that the humanness of bullies and how they're actually when you're getting bullied. You, you, you believe that the bully is, is so powerful. Um, and um, so your fear actually increases because there's, you, you, you're up, up against an opponent that you don't think can be beat, you know? But the reality is like, they're just human. And so they're, they're actually, and the, the second you just, you just have to basically stop like, okay, I'm not gonna be bullied anymore. It's a very easy decision. It's a very quick decision. It's not easy, but it's very quick. The second you say you're not going to be bullied anymore, you're just not, it just stops because you don't actually have to be bullied. You don't have to put your, yourself through that. You don't, you, it's, um, and there's a lot of dangerous bullying scenarios. So it's not sometimes that easy, but, um, like, uh, yeah, just, uh, it, it, it took a while, but when I realized that the humanness of, of bullies, um, and the fact that it, you know, I just decided not to be bullied anymore. Um, that gave me a lot of, of, of power. Um, <clears throat> and then the, the the third one, which is really very very important, is um, you're important. Like um, I say, every single show I play, um, 
you know, I, I was at a Jamaican spot in, um, in Toronto and a girl was like working by herself and she like was doing everything. And then I left and I was like, do you know what? Like, you're so important. Like the amount of people that you've helped today. Um, and then I just need you to know that you're, you're crucially and you just left. But like that, that, when you say that to yourself, you can say that to yourself or you can say that to other people, like that is distributing love. That's literally it. Like it's, it's not more complicated than that. It doesn't actually need to be this grand thing. You know, you don't have to play a live show or, or do music or sign a record deal or anything. Like it's like distributing love is um, actually the easiest thing that anyone can do. And it's just loving people. It's like, it's not actually that hard. Um, so you're important, but these aren't bulletproof. But, and, you know, most importantly, um, I will not be denied. That is a big three right there. I feel like with those three, you're kind of set to go. Like, I, th I think my favorite out of that one is you're important because I'm big on distributing love as well. I feel like people really, people really undersell and underrate the importance of distributing love and, and making other people feel loved and let them know they're important, especially yourself. You know, I think that we, we, we talk about it, obviously we say that it means something, but I think putting it into practice is something very different. So I, I really, I really was, you know, I, I really felt that when I, I know that I found out that this mixtape was kind of along that message. Cause that's something that I feel like, I feel like that's, that's maybe the most important thing of anything we've said in, in, in this interview, in this conversation oh, is, is definitely distributing love because I think that affects how we treat people. You know, you talked about bullies being bulletproof and you think this bully is, so strong and you know this bully is still a person you know and my mom used to always say no one in their right mind just punches someone in the face for no reason you know right there, there's there, obviously there's a million thoughts that came before you put your hands on someone or before you said something to somebody so yeah i i think that's as powerful um for anyone who just listened to this conversation take that away distributing love is probably the best thing you could do yeah 100 percent um, th thank you for joining us, man. This has been a great conversation. Shout out, shout out to the CIA and the Wi-Fi haters for trying to bring us <laughs> down. <laughs> they were trying so hard, like, but he was getting no. Had some uh, some moments there. I even got a chance to flex a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, it's uh, it was it was good just to to get a chance to chat. And I'm really I really appreciate you for listening to the project. Um, and you know, just picking out. Um, moments that actually are really key moments to me as well. I really always love it when people um, they notice the things that like you know you want them to notice, but then when they actually mm -hmm. notice it, it's like really cool. Nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And and last but not least, if you're getting involved with mafia, you're getting gifts. So anyone listening to this, just <laughs> just, just just know, um, you know, saying king of king of romance, a uh, million percent. I'm trying. I'm trying to follow in your footsteps, man. Look, Hopefully, this this conversation could be like. I'm not joking. Like honestly, like <laughs> even even my my friends who are guys. Like it's not even like it's not even. This is not exclusive to like females and like. We just have a problem. Like, like <laughs> bro, like I got you. Like you know, if well, I'm just the best, that's just all I'm saying right now. Okay. So, okay. Top top gift giver. Oh uh, man! Ne next time we chat, hopefully I could I could tell you that I'm truthfully getting to your level. Right now, I'm definitely on the. I thought about giving you that, but I know <laughs> I know I know I know where that's gonna head. I know where that's gonna. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna send you a text that said. You know, I'm gonna send you a text that said. Um, there, there, there's that post I saw on Instagram. Maybe you saw it too. It's like, don't buy gifts for someone that you can't post on your story. And and, I, and I, that hit you, didn't it? <laughs> Different. And I said, I, I said, yeah, you got to really put that in perspective. Um, th thank you for joining us. For anyone who's made it to the end of this podcast, go ahead and subscribe to us. Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Leave us a rating and a review. Five stars, not a single star less. Follow us on Instagram, The Cool Table Live, and on YouTube at The Cool Table Live. You can listen to The Cool Table every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on CGRU, 1280 a.m. in Toronto. And of course, until next time, know yourself, know your worth. Thank you.